This is the Brocade Campus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. In this episode, we're going to have a quick look at static routing on the Brocade ICX series. So from config T, first let's have a look at what our routing table looks like before we start. So we'll do a show IP route here. And we have two routes in our, in our uh, table. So we have a 10.0.0.0 slash 24 directly connected through a, via VE10 or virtual Ethernet 10. We have a 20.0.0.0 slash 24 via VE21. So these are directly connected interfaces. So um, in order to create a static route, there's three elements that make up the static route. There is a destination subnet, there's a subnet mask, and there's a next hop or, a, or an, an outgoing interface or null zero, but there's some sort of um, action and what to do with it. What static route doesn't care about is source. Source is irrelevant to routing and it doesn't really matter where it came from. It just wants to know where it's going. So in order to create a static route, we do an IP route and then the destination you're trying to get to. So uh, let's say we're trying to get to 192.168.1.0 slash 24. Um, so we can either we can either do a CIDR mask, just say slash 24, or you can type out the full mask. That's completely up to you. It'll change it over for you in the running config anyway. So we'll do it this way, typed out, and then we'll set a next hop. So in our case, it has to be something directly connected to the interface uh, or another option. So we can have a next hop IP address. We can have an outgoing interface. So we could say interface um, Ethernet 1 slash 1 slash 1. We could do null 0, which says drop it in hardware. Or we could have a tunnel, so a GRE tunnel, or lastly, a VE or a virtual Ethernet interface. One of those can be the next hop. More times than not, though, that's going to be an IP address. So we'll, we'll assign it to a subnet that we're connected to. So we have an interface in the 10.0.0.0 subnet. It happens to be 10.0.0.1. So we'll set another in, uh, address, right? So it has to be something reachable. So if I set my next hop to 30.0.0.1, uh, or two, should, I should say, then it's not going to show up in the route table because it's not a reachable next hop. So it doesn't, it's not going to waste resources and black hole traffic that it can't get to. So if I do this and I do a show IP route again, whoops, excuse me, I now see my 192.168.1 subnet via 10.0.0.2 or VE10, right? But however, if I created a static, um, Let's say I created a static to 192.168.2.0, and I'll change my next hop address to something that I don't own an IP in. So I'll change it to 30.0.0.2. If I do a show IP route, that route is not going to show up in the routing table because we don't have a valid next hop. However, if I went to, say, interface v10, and I applied a 30 interface to it, so let's say 30.0.0.1 slash 24. I do a show IP route again. I now see that my route has shown up via 30.0.0.2. So I have an, an IP address in this 30 subnet. So it's now a valid next hop according to that. Um, so we could also do something like null zero. So we could say IP route. Um, you know, 192.168.3.0 slash 24 null zero, which means anything destined for that subnet, just drop it in hardware. Don't make, oh, excuse me, I can't do that from the VE. Um, don't make a routing decision, just dump it and get rid of that traffic. So say you're under attack or, or something like that. Right, so here's my here's my null zero route, which shows the next hop shows as drop. So it's going to drop that in hardware. Um, you can also do things like um, for a, for a uh, static route, you could change the the uh, distance on it or the administrative distance um, to make it less desirable or more desirable, um, something like that. Change the cost on it. However, that's the basics of it. So thanks for joining. Tune in again.